Hi, my name is Tom Sokolovsky and I'm a nutritional therapist and functional medicine practitioner. Today I want to talk to you about the importance of endotoxins or lipopolysaccharides on health and also about small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and poor thyroid function and how these three may interrelate in some people. So small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is defined as an increase in the number of bacteria in your small intestine. You're supposed to have around 100,000 times more bacteria per square centimetre in your large intestine as in your small intestine, partly because you're supposed to be absorbing foods, nutrients, in your small intestine. <clears throat> so when you have an overgrowth of bacteria in your small intestine, you can be malabsorbing nutrients and carbohydrates can ferment and cause symptoms such as bloating and burping. You may have constipation or diarrhoea, depending on the kind of bacteria or in fact archaea that are in your small intestine. You may well have fat malabsorption and thus not be absorbing vitamins A and vitamin D and vitamin K2 as well. And you may also be malabsorbing other micronutrients like vitamin B12 and iron in particular. Now, although SIBO, uh, which is short for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, is often linked with IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, in the scientific community there is no consensus as to what proportion of IBS is caused by SIBO. And this is partly due to controversy around the accuracy of SIBO breath testing in its various forms. Now, I do find in clinic when I use SIBO breath testing, it's very helpful despite its limitations. I often find IBS correlates with a positive SIBO breath test. I use the Laxalose breath test and symptoms improve as the breath test results improve. Moreover, also many clients have symptoms that aren't related to the gut and they will show a positive SIBO breath test result and their symptoms will come down when we work with the SIBO and the test results improve. So the scientific literature does in fact show many conditions linked with SIBO and I often see this in clients who have no gut symptoms but they do have SIBO. So in the scientific literature we see a link between SIBO and we have fatty liver disease for example, obesity, chronic fatigue syndrome or ME, fibromyalgia, osteoporosis, which may be partly due to the nutrient malabsorption and partly due to inflammation, which I'll come to shortly. There's a very strong link with acne rosacea as well, and also depression, anxiety and insomnia. So if I see a positive breath test result in clinic, we can reduce some foods, certain foods like FODMAPs and certain kinds of carbohydrates perhaps, depending on the individual, to reduce SIBO symptoms and we can take antimicrobials. This usually helps to reduce the SIBO. However, the SIBO often comes back. So this is why it's very important to look at underlying causes of SIBO. Three of the most common underlying causes of SIBO are poor gastrointestinal motility, low stomach acid and poor bile flow. So when you fast for around four to five hours in between meals, you might feel a rumbling in the stomach, or you might not, but you should have a peristaltic contraction, a wave of contractions in fact, happening in your small intestine, which take excess bacteria from the small intestine and carry them into the large intestine, thus preventing SIBO. So that's why gastrointestinal motility is important to prevent SIBO. Now stomach acid and bile are important because they are antibacterial, so that's how they help prevent SIBO. But what could be the cause of poor bile flow, low stomach acid and poor gastrointestinal motility? Well, poor thyroid function could cause all three of these and thus could be at the root cause of some people's small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So the question is also, why is SIBO associated with so many conditions? Does it cause them and how might it cause them? Well, if you have SIBO or dysbiosis, you tend to have an inflamed gut wall, which can cause increased permeability of lipopolysaccharides or endotoxins. So the endotoxins or lipopolysaccharides come from the cell walls of gram-negative bacteria in your gut. 
and when these endotoxins or lipopolysaccharides are absorbed into the bloodstream because there is permeability due to SIBO or dysbiosis, you, the result in the bloodstream is inflammation, which can carry over to all parts of the body. And this is why lipopolysaccharides or endotoxemia, which is when the lipopolysaccharides cause inflammation in the body, has been linked to many conditions such as cardiovascular disease, chronic fatigue syndrome, fatty liver, depression, neurodegenerative conditions, psoriasis and other autoimmune conditions, type 2 diabetes. For example, caffeine is thought to be protective against Parkinson's disease and one of the reasons for this is that caffeine reduces the type of inflammation caused by lipopolysaccharides or by endotoxemia. Now I don't suggest drinking coffee if you have SIBO or IBS or any kind of dysbiosis because caffeine can increase adrenaline and cortisol and reduce your gut defences against overgrowth. The other thing that endotoxins can cause is impacted thyroid function. So this is where we have a vicious circle and where it gets interesting because SIBO can allow more endotoxins to be absorbed due to causing leaky gut that can cause inflammation which can impact thyroid function. When thyroid function is impacted, you may have reduced stomach acid, reduced gastrointestinal motility, and reduced bile flow. So in this way, bacteria can build up and you can get worsening SIBO. It can be important if you have SIBO to check your thyroid function. Look at any other possible causes of thyroid dysfunction apart from the endotoxins and work with those and also to minimise endotoxins. So minimising endotoxemia is vital for everyone, not just those of us with SIBO because it's tied in with so many conditions. So the worst thing you can do for endotoxemia is to eat high carbohydrates and high saturated fats in your diet and to avoid plant foods in their whole minimally unprocessed forms. So carbohydrates will feed a bacterial overgrowth, they will aggravate SIBO and other forms of dysbiosis and thus increase the amount of bacterial endotoxin in your gut. Saturated fats on the other hand increase the absorption of endotoxins from the gut, whereas omega-3 fatty acids on the other hand decrease the absorption of endotoxins from the gut. Omega-3 fatty acids also balance the negative effects of omega-6 fatty acids on the gut flora. So you can increase your omega-3 fatty acids and decrease omega-6 fatty acids by eating oily fish maybe three to five times a week. Your oily fish should be wild, not farmed, because farmed fish, especially salmon, is very toxic. Also choose from low mercury fish, so you can remember that by the word smash. So salmon, mackerel, but not king mackerel, anchovies, sardines and herring. Eat your meat grass-fed because the grass provides omega-3 fats. And minimise chicken and pork, they tend to have more omega-6 fatty acids. Now nuts are very beneficial for health in general. For instance, they're really helpful for reducing your risk of heart disease. So eat a handful of nuts a day by all means, but avoid nuts and seed oils which are high in omega-6 fatty acids. Now if you are on a SIBO-restricted diet, you may already be so restricted that cutting down on fats and saturated fats may be difficult. On the other hand, you may have fat malabsorption, so you may have aggravation of symptoms when you eat too many fats. In any case, you need some saturated fat anyway, so there are other things you can do to reduce endotoxemia. So vitamins A, D and zinc help repair the gut wall and reduce the influx of endotoxins, whereas a deficiency of vitamin C will increase the influx of endotoxins. So because you have fat malabsorption, it might be particularly important to supplement vitamins A and D. Now, I haven't seen much research about the use of polyphenols in SIBO treatment, but there's plenty of research showing that polyphenols reduce endotoxemia. You can find polyphenols in deeply coloured vegetables and fruit, 
and they may therefore help reduce endotoxemia and thus support the thyroid and both the effects of SIBO and one of the root causes of SIBO. You can also find polyphenols in turmeric, ginger, rosemary, extra virgin olive oil, or you could supplement curcumin, quercetin, resveratrol, grape seed extract, or the caffeinated green tea extract. So also bifidobacteria probiotics can reduce endotoxemia from a higher saturated fat diet. However, bifidobacteria probiotics can aggravate SIBO for some people. But for general endotoxemia, certainly I would recommend bifidobacteria probiotics. Also helpful can be lipoic acid, propolis and lactoferrin. However, lipoic acid can aggravate a yeast overgrowth, such as a candida overgrowth in some people, probably more when it's in the small intestine, which is when it's called SIFO, or small intestinal fungal overgrowth. Finally, reduce stress, because stress can cause leaky gut, which will increase the influx of endotoxins. In my next video, I'm going to talk about more recent research into some newly discovered causes of endotoxemia and how you can reduce your risk of various conditions in the long term. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video.